Hello, <clears throat> my name is Autumn Brown and I'm a researcher with Oklahoma State's Oklahoma Oral History Research Project for our activism and education and the Civil Rights Movement Oral History Project. Today, February 10th, 2020, I am meeting with Elaine Ford to discuss her experiences with school desegregation in Oklahoma City. Ms. Ford, thank you so much for talking with me today. Just tell, let's begin by telling me, uh, <clears throat> you tell me about yourself, like a little bit about where you were born, your family, your com the community you grew up in. Okay, my name is Elaine Ford and I was born here in Oklahoma City. Um, uh, my family, uh, mother and father's name is Jake and Ann Tomlin. We, uh, they're from Bowley, Oklahoma, so the homestead is in Bowley, Oklahoma. I spent more, most of my time in Bowley, Oklahoma, here in Oklahoma City. I went to school here in Oklahoma City. My dad uh, drove back and forth from Bowley, Oklahoma to Almer's uh, Packing House. And uh, as he come up here to, in Oklahoma City to work, he would bring me. I did not attend school in Bowley, Oklahoma. I attended school in Oklahoma City at Douglas High School, Dunbar Elementary School, as well as Kennedy middle school so that's where i'm from okay um what was the community like where you were growing up it's oh it was really close to that it was a uh you know you used to hear the saying that you know when uh in the community in the neighborhood that uh if one if a, a neighbor says something to you your mom or dad is going to know something about it and so forth they watched over us in the community uh here in oklahoma city as well as in Bowley, oklahoma uh, where uh, my family uh, spent most of their time. We had a forum down there, um, you know, but it was very close-knit, very uh, togetherness. We helped each other. It was more of the time, which is not like that now, that everyone helped each other. We knew everyone. Just like I, li I live in my community right now. I don't, I don't know a third of my neighbors, but that, back in the day, we knew who our neighbors were and the family, who his family were. Um, so you mentioned that you went to Dunbar, Kennedy, and Douglas. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about your experiences while attending those schools? Okay, while attending those schools, of course, when I was attending them, uh, it was segregation. Um, all black. We have. Uh, I remember that the community, uh, mom, dads, uh, businesses that were in the community, they were supply the schools, they helped supply the schools with uh, things that we needed. Uh, we needed. I can't just say uh, that I remember that we didn't have the books that we needed because uh, well, there's a will, there's a way. Those teachers during that time, they made sure you had all of the audits taught from the knowledge base that they had. They were very uh, knowledgeable with things, you know, the teaching the math, the history, and they, we, oh, we knew our history, most definitely. They would talk about that all the time. This is where we were, this is where we are now, and this is where you're going, you're going forward. Um, the community worked diligently with the, uh, the schools and the children. We have different events like a, a May Day program, you know, things that we don't do now. We don't even bring that up or the students are not involved. Some schools and stuff like that are not involved in such programs we had. We had extensive plays during that time. We learned uh, through the plays, we learned how to read, how to perform, how to speak, you know, how to uh, act appropriately and so forth. So the community was most definitely totally involved. In the segregation, we, we, me personally, I didn't understand the separation uh, because we were, were, we are and we made it work. My parents made it work. We, they didn't talk about it much. I didn't learn about the segregation until I was probably in high school when I realized what was really, really going on. Um, but as jumping the gun, but I could tell because I hear the conversation of mom and dad uh, that when we would leave Oklahoma City to go to Bowl, there were certain signs on buildings or restaurants that say colored and they had an arrow where you had to point where we had to go to the back. So I remember things like that, but my dad and, uh, would always protect me from and my mom from that. So you talked about the teachers. Can you talk a little bit more in depth about? Like when you say they taught from their own knowledge, right? You know, of course they were graduates, you know, of colleges right. and so forth, and all. But the books that we did have, they would improvise. They have they supplemented things, Bible, you know, history. You know, they used a lot of Bible. You know, they, we had the Bible there. We 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 worked from that. They would work from that and teach about what is the, this is a verb. This is the action verb. You know, who is this character in this in this book of in the Bible? So we learned things that way. They talk about. Uh, different things about music and so forth, you know, 
and all ghost gospel music was, you know, in tune. Then, but they taught us, brought in different genres of music. You know, uh, orchestra would come, or a uh, band teacher that I knew, Mr. Um, Mr. Lane, Calandus Lane. He was a graduate of Langston University. He, he made that known and proud graduate. I'm sorry, of Langston University. That uh, that. Uh, <laughs> that he um, the teachers all different types of music type, you know that's not the sympathy symphony and then so forth then you talk about uh, uh, opera and so forth and he would explain the difference and so forth and he would let us go to the beat and how to be stay on beat and and then he bring in gospel music you know what churches everyone's close knit there's a church on every corner as it is now, but I think it was probably more then. And, uh, and the pastors and so forth, and the community, as I mentioned, were involved. The churches would come. Uh, some of the leaders of the churches would come and, and teach or tell us about stories about the time that they were in school or what happened during their time and, and why it's important to just remain in school and to graduate. And they, that, that was from the lower level on up. So and the way that they taught, the teachers, the way they were teaching. I remember distinctly how one of my teachers, Mrs. Reynolds, I don't think I was in the fourth or fifth grade. We learned, we didn't learn, we learned math by playing dominoes, by doing hot scotch, you know, or, or we did learn fraction by cooking, you know, having a cooking class and how you divide this up. You have this number here, what fraction is it? What is the denominator and so forth. And we would act, we would play role play a lot. Yeah. So those are things that I remember distinctively. So connecting the teaching to actual yes. real life. Mm -hmm. Making it relevant. Wow. Yes. Um, what was the, so you talked about growing up not knowing um, segre mm -hmm. segregation, right. things like that. So with what you can remember, do you recall like any economic tensions or anything during your childhood growing up? Well, economic tensions, yeah. I guess when my parents were very, I'm the only child. <laughs> so they, they protected me a lot, you know. Uh, but I could, now that I think about it, I could see the difference of um, by going to one community to the other, but it's crossing the railroad tracks, if they say. I could, I could see the difference. Mm -hmm. um, I consider us as a middle class family. Yeah, mm -hmm. mom and dad, you know, have dad, mom worked. My mom didn't work. She, was a, she worked from home, she's a beautician. And then, um, but I, I could see the difference because I know there's a lot of forming going on, uh, community gardens and so forth, you know, within that community. And uh, we share a lot of food. Uh, they have what is known as good commodities. I would see people in commodity lines where they have that type of uh, service, you know, for the low economic, you know, families and so forth. Uh, I guess as they identify as low economic families. But other than that, of just you know being involved in it, I wasn't. I just know just by hearing, by, by hearing, mm -hmm. listening. Because you know a lot of, in my days, not children would stay out of sight <laughs> when adults were dealing with just different issues and so forth. No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so. So you mentioned that you didn't notice books were old or things like that. So while you were attending segregated schools, can you just talk about like what that was like? I mean, just I guess what it was like to know that you have to attend the school because of the color of your skin. What it was like. Um... Like what was like the, what were the conditions of the school that you can talk about the, those experiences? The condition was it was it was well kept because community made sure uh, they were. I remember seeing that uh, different ones families coming if they had a task, you know, from different classes. Uh, I remember one time um, uh, I guess a note went out or whatever because that's all the way of communicating a letter. Or teachers would go to our home, come to our homes. And talk with our parents, you know, and let us know. And when it comes to parent-teacher conferences, as they call it now, and so forth, parents would show up. Education was important. 
to them. But they let them know they would come and uh, paint, you know, and you where to get the paint. I don't have the slightest idea where they got the paint, you know, and so forth. Or you need to cl uh, clean up the floors, uh, wax the floors, or whatever the case may be. Or it's a playground equipment is broken where, you know, we had seats, uh, saw uh, teeter totters and so forth, or the maypole and so forth. They would come and paint. Everything was, from what my perspective, I remember it was really groomed and clean. It really was. Now, when it came to the books of material, uh, you know, I remember here, since when I was in middle school, that we didn't have enough books, you know, for everyone to have in a class and so forth. All the books were old. Pages were ripped out, you know, out of them and so forth. You have pages missing and so forth. And I remember one of uh, my uh, teachers, I think it was an English class and so forth. This page is missing and so forth. You, you have the beginning of the page before and the page after what do you think went in the middle of it? So our creative writing come into an eye and innovativeness came in during that time. Wow. So it, it was really interesting. I'm sure this. Sorry. I could probably need to call a Chris back because he's calling us. Oh, no. <laughs> he should know that we're doing it. <laughs> he, I told him. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so were you still in school during the time that Oklahoma's plan to roll? Um, out school desegregation. Were you still in school during the time Oklahoma was playing, rolling out school desegregation efforts? I was. Okay. Can you mm. talk about what that was like? I remember um, that's when um, a lot of meetings went on. And they didn't even involve us as children, you know, how you feel and uh, what if. And we, if you go on here, and I'm going to be divided us into okay, go ahead. us into different sections and so forth. Um, it was a, uh, it was interesting to see. It was a lot of tension. It wasn't more tension. It was a, uh, the unknown, you know, because um, and I was a, a older student during that time and so forth. It really. I got more involved because when I started teaching and so forth, mm -hmm. um, that's when I really got involved into the solidification of what was going on and being involved in it. And so it, seeing how it began and where it ended. Well, I was in high school when it, it began, but when I got, and it was just, it wasn't a real clear pro plan during that time. It's just something that they wanted to do. I remember Mr. Dow. He was an optometrist um, down on uh, 2nd Street. No, he's on 8th Street. He was totally involved in uh, desegregation for me because he's on the school board during that time. I remember him speaking and bringing the community together, meeting at different churches and telling us what's transpiring during that time and what we had to do, what the parents had to do you know, to be involved. So I remember it, it was more, uh, it wasn't, a lot of tension just being afraid of the unknown. Were you bust? No. Okay. No. But when I was teaching, my uh, students were bust. Okay. To tell where me, I taught. Tell me about what that was like. I taught at Parmalee Elementary School when I moved here. Oh, first, my first teaching job was in Guthrie. And of course, the students were bust, you know, in Guthrie, a small town of Guthrie. But once I was, um, applied, I worked there for a year, but once I applied for Oklahoma State Public School, I worked at Parmalee Elementary School, which is the south side. And students that I lived on the east side of Oklahoma City, on 1300 block off of Lottie. And students were bused from the east side schools to way south. And I mean, I remember he had seeing students, little babies, kindergartners, uh, first, second grade. So kindergartners would really stay within the school unit, the neighborhood. But I say first on up, they were on the bus stop with their brothers and sisters, you know, on the bus before daylight to catch the bus, to for a bus that far and so forth. And that was a hardship on a lot of families. But the student the kids, they grew up real fast. They became very independent, you know, and so forth. And they knew that they're, uh, with the uh, teachers being, uh, as an African-American, been put in different sites, but I think it was mandatory is required that you have to have a certain number of black teachers in, within uh, your school and so forth but they will always gravitate to the ones that were there so they know that they were they were protected during their time so yeah and the busing was a was a 
a trying time. It really was for the community. For um, <clears throat> as a teacher forced to be at a school that, you know, like they're trying to desegregate, what was it like for you? Uh, it was um, not necessary. Cause I was, we were informed as, t as teachers of what was happening. If it wasn't by a school board member, you know, so forth, let me know that uh, I was a member of the uh, the union, AFT, uh, American Federation of Teachers, or uh, OEA, or whatever the case may be. They would keep us abreast of what was going on, as, and in some more than others, <laughs> what was going on. But as a teacher, I felt that it was my duty to get in there to make sure things work well or to the best of its ability for our people our students our kids and so forth and for the community it was my it's my duty to make it happen um if what i didn't know i'm the type of, i would find out you know we, we, we uh, as uh, african-american teachers or black teachers we would call our own meetings at different sites and so you know we're going to meet here and the way we communicated with, with each other of course by phone you know, and so forth, or in the churches and so forth. The pastors would get be involved as well. Let us know that we, uh, there's going to be a meeting, you know, because of, uh, we had different leaders, you know, within the organization that we formulate, you know, formed. And uh, they would make, send announcements to the schools. Or we get letters in the mail that we're going to meet here and you need to be there in order to, to help make it comfortable or more rewarding that our students will be taught you know, where they should be taught. They deserve to be taught. Because, you know, during that time, it was, uh, some of the students, you know, had special needs and so forth, and they were not given tests the way they should be to see where they were or what need to be done. They just put it in a classroom. Mm -hmm. If you were of a chronologically supposed to be in a, a second grade room, that's where they put you, not testing them to see if they have some special needs. And, but that came along, they had, they had, they were doing it with, other students, mm -hmm. you know, but they weren't doing it regularly until the, t the parent asked for it. And that's what they need to do, ask for it. That's what we informed them to do. So what was the purpose of black teachers from all multiple sites? Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of black teachers almost forming, organizing um, from multiple sites? What was, what was you guys' purpose? For equity, make sure that we get the same learning, teaching, as the white students were getting. Well, there shouldn't be any difference. You know, if you have a, oh, a black student in my class, uh, we expect for the uh, white teachers to be, do the same, to teach them the way they teach their white students okay. and so forth. That was the purpose of it. Okay. Make no difference. Because <clears throat> so, believe it or not, the, a lot of the, some of, not a lot, Many of the uh, white teachers had a belief that we couldn't learn the way um, white students could learn. Hmm. Interesting. Like they, they voiced that? Right. Well, more of, uh, yeah, they, they voiced it. You know, we got the, we knew, with actually speaking loud in words. Because you have to put you in a corner. Or, you know, you have your, all your white students sitting right in front of you, but our little ones over there to the far back, in the yeah. back, you know, and so forth, yeah. and so forth. I mean, what led you to pursue education? I, I've always wanted to be a teacher, always. Um, my mom, for one thing, um, uh, she encouraged me to be a teacher because um, I would do a lot of things with my relatives, my cousins, and so forth. Uh, I always found be the one they come and ask, how do you do this and so forth? What, how did you get that grade? Or uh, this stuff is just too hard. My mom always taught me that uh, nothing is too hard. Where there's a will, there's a way, and we can find people who know how to do this. Let's 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 learn from them. And she said, now when you have the opportunity to do the same, uh, give back. You make sure you do it. So when I started doing that, I was already doing it. I felt comfortable in doing it. So when I uh, was uh, went to Lancaster University, um, that's, the first, that's all I wanted, and so forth. That's all I wanted to do is be a teacher. And then once I got my teaching degree, 
I, you know, I'm, there's more, you know, so I went on further. Okay, so you got higher education? Mm-hmm, uh, master's degree. Okay. You know, in uh, administration, and became a principal, and uh, as well as superintendent liaison in that. So cool. it's been great. What subject did you teach? I teach, I taught, you know, you know, when I was a teacher, mm -hmm. all subjects, you know, in, uh, oh, you're elementary. in elementary. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I have a minor in English. Okay. How did the climate of school desegregation and busing impact your teaching, if at all? It, it uh, how did it impact my teaching? Or the curriculum you taught? Oh, the curriculum? Either, either. Okay. Um, Desegregation impact my teaching. It gave me uh, the the strength and the courage to be my best and don't deviate from um, what was needed to make it happen. You know, I use all my resources. I would use, you know, if I knew someone, a parent that could help me with certain things and so forth. Um, I, I, I guess the segregation gave me the, the strength and courage to to make things work for the good of the order mm -hmm. and and not be afraid. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I probably, I, I know I was afraid, but I wouldn't let anyone know mm -hmm. that I was afraid. I'd be like that duck. I'd be patting like hell. <laughs> what <laughs> were you afraid of? I'm afraid of what... Um, well, stumbling blocks that would, that would occur, you know, what battles I had to fight in order to get equity, you know, and so forth. And, you know, is I remember um, uh, uh, one of the teachers, uh, maybe even Clara Lupa, you mentioned, uh, as well as she was a teacher out of the Dungy area. And um, Joyce, um, Joyce, Joyce Henderson. And so forth. Uh, I saw how strong they were. They were some strong ladies, mm -hmm. and there were some men as well, you know. And I said, "Well, they could do it. I know I can do it." And so forth. And they, with that support, and so forth. And they all with it, you know. We here, and they and most definitely you go to them anytime, yeah. and they will help you find there's a way. You know, this is who you need to talk with. This is what you need to do, and so forth. Stand your grounds, but always be professional. Yeah. Know what you know and know what you're talking about and have facts to support whatever you're going to do. Right. And so forth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so lastly, what, what would you say about the present state of education for black students? They have... Uh, If they use what is at their fingertips, um, all their resources, I think, and I know that they will have all the opportunities that they ever will ever need or want because it's there. Knowledge is powerful. And that what they need to know is just grab hold to that and believe in themselves, use what is out there for them, and um, keep moving forward this day and time education is no reason why anyone should be not be educated with all the uh, resources that we have and the people that we have use every bit of what it takes to move forward be educated don't be out there just being the, the minimum of what you expect i just do enough to get there push it I was talking to one of my students today that, uh, and I wrote him a letter of expectations, you know, that you had the potentials to do much better than what you're doing. And I'm going to give you the recipe of how that can be done. Okay, believe in yourself. Uh, if you believe in yourself and use your resources, and consider me one of your resources and so forth and do what is planned. When we come together and plan, of action, you're gonna do well, and so forth. But I can't want it any more than you want it. So if you want it, I'm right here, and so forth. That's where the education. If they want it, it's there. 
go for it. You know, it's a lot of, I hear some people more, uh, will say, yeah, I don't have the money to do this. And so, you don't need the money. Just go out there and you can find it. There are people out there that want to help you 100%, but you make sure you give your all, you know, so for you have the grades or you have the potential of show that you, you, you I'm serious, I may not be where you, I need to be at this time. You know, so just, just work with me. Right. You find anyone, they have a, as my mom would say, a liquor fence. <laughs> they got to reach out and help you. They're going to help you. Yeah. So you have to show them that you want it and need it. Was well, there anything else you'd like to finish with or any final thoughts? Other than, uh, you know, I appreciate this opportunity. I really do. I appreciate it wholeheartedly. I, you know, little old me and so forth. But I've been through the storm and the rain. You know, it, it took some get up and go to get where I am at this time. I some some ups and downs. Good I weighed the bad, but yet and still uh what I have gone through to get to where I am, um, it was a learning cycle for me and I just like to just continue to pass this on until the Lord say so. And uh and I love every moment when it comes to the edge component and working with the community and uh helping people in general, you know, whatever it takes. We, we're fine. How we can get it done? That's why I tell my grand, my granddaughter. I have one that's a, a senior in college, and I have one that's a senior in high school. And I tell those, those young ladies all the time, I dare you to go out there and not give you all, and so forth, and to make it happen. Go out there and help yourself, and in return, you help someone else. And that's my that's my pet peeve. It really is. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking with me. Oh, sure, sure. Thank you.